doing How that long did it take you as a writer to develop the hard voice that you, that you could trust? It just came along, you know. I mean, it, it just came with the other thing. It was interesting, the, the, when the hard voice came, it just freed up the, the big voice, you know what I mean? This made me freer. Because I knew there was, there was something in there was that was watching out a little bit, you know, so I could just kind of go. And then I stopped caring altogether, you know, about the hard voice at all. Just going like I'm just going to do what I want. I'm just going to fall. And do you rewrite? Do you do a number of drafts? Do you rewrite? Do you cut? Or what you... I've been doing lately? Uh, it's about getting back to just a little bit of theater and TV. I because I worked for like almost a decade in various ways in television. I when I stopped and I did stop a while ago, I found. I've written seven plays in, in a year. I wrote. I'm simply said, why did you do that? I said, because I, my psyche was clogged. It was actually clogged from writing for television. Because even with one other thing, stuff I, I was able to write, there's a part of you that knows you can't go that far and you can't, you're holding off. And just, but I had a clogged psyche. I was really, and stuff just started pouring out of me when we stopped writing, I stopped doing TV. Seven plays, one <clears> after another after another. Sometimes I was, they were on top of each other. I was finishing one and I had this thing. And they weren't ideas. They were impulses. They were going like, uh, I don't know, I wrote this. Uh, I did this one, they just came. It was so strange. It wasn't like... Well, play just opened at uh, ACT in San Francisco, right? It's just about to open. That's called uh, Dead Metaphor. But uh, 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 Afghan, uh, Canadian soldier from Africa gets a sniper, he comes back, he can't get work. So... Uh, um, Why is that opening in San Francisco? Because they think he's an American soldier who came back from Afghanistan. It's one of the times it actually could have been either. Right. The same situation. It means you can realize the vets that can't get work. We have both the same, both countries have exactly the same problem with those guys. They can't get work. They come back from this place. So this thing is about he's a sniper. So what's he, what's he going to do? What's he learn? He didn't learn auto mechanics and stuff. He learned how to... So he gets involved with this right-wing politician and... Uh, Finds out at the end that actually sniping is the thing that. Why is no Canadian theater doing? Oh well, in fact, it was going to do. I pulled it when they mistreated my friend, <laughs> and uh, I was I pulled it within hours of finding out that he had, uh, he had fired. Yeah, fired, dismissed, trampled right. on, thrown out like garbage, all this right. stuff, you know. Uh, so yeah, they were going to do it. So um, he's now he, he's going to try and when it was his, with this Canadian thing, he'll try right. and resurrect. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's big. It's a bit thousand seat theater at ACT, right? So it's, mm -hmm. we'll see about that. It's it's interesting. They're, they're good people. So you started off here in Toronto, the taxi driver who saw a note about the factory <laughs> and he wrote. Yeah. And then you started writing. I'll just synopsis. You started writing like off the wall plays that first people went whoa, well, and, what's wrong and with then him? they got it, and then they started to hear a voice, and then you started being produced outside the country, mm -hmm. big time. Mm -hmm. All those productions of your work in Australia and the United States and Germany and even Czech Republic I've seen, how much do they influence what you do when you come back? When well, I don't back? go look at them, first of all. I you think don't? No. I just think it's dangerous. It's dangerous in the same way it is for me to spend too much time in theatre. I really found out in the early years when I was spending a fair amount of time in theatre and talking to a lot of theatre people and did, you know, doing all that stuff that it was really not what I wanted to do and how I wrote. The more time I spent away from theatre out in the world was really what fed me. And I don't think it's good for me to look at my own productions of, you know, I just do them myself and then let people do what they want with them. So that's emotional as well as kind of just creative. They have people call up and say, oh, it did really, really badly. I go, oh, it's too bad. Or they say, oh, it did really, really well. I go, oh, it's okay. It's nice. But it's not a big thing for me. They have You're not curious to see what the Amaro de Chicago Theatre will do to uh, you know, suburban hotel, or no. what the checks will do, or well, I got an idea what the checks will do. I, mean, <laughs> I've seen what the polls do. Uh, what the polls do? Well, they do what that thing. They do what they need to do. And there was a production they brought here for the, the what, that big festival. What's it called? What's the big theater festivals here? I can't even remember. Uh, it should be called the World Stage. Yeah, they, yeah and Luminato. the polls came with the production of one of the uh, one of the suburban hotel plays, which uh, my family went to see. I, I just heard a description of it, and I thought it was great, you know. It had nothing to do, it had sort of something to do with the play. They just took it this passionate this far. I mean, I've seen some YouTube shots. Uh, Germans have done, I mean, the, the Germans have done a lot of productions of suburban hotel, and some of them are unrecognizable, you know. Some of them are, well, it's not a hotel room. That's bars, you know, or whatever. But some of them are in motel rooms, some of them are in motel rooms with uh, faces out onto the streets, and they have, in like, you know, Germany, they have like major theaters in every city, and 
millions of them, it seems, you know, because I've had like 70 productions there in the last six or seven or eight years, you know, so they just keep doing them. And they, I don't think I could ever, the guy who translated them can't get a grip on them. He goes from one to another, he just gets furious, right? He just gets all... What do you mean he can't get a grip? He can't find what they're doing, why they're doing, why, how they can find so many different ways to do these, mess them up or do them, you know what I mean? He gets, so he's the translator and he drives him crazy. I'm certainly not going to go live through that. I mean, I've talked to playwrights who follow their work around. I've stumbled across it. I've stumbled across a couple of university productions on my play that I find very interesting. I find if they're done by interest, uh, amateur groups or university groups, I, there's always at least one moment in one of those productions that's so illuminating, and they've done it so differently in a way that I never would have thought of that uh, that's been interesting. Uh, but in terms of following them around, I can't do it. I can't do it. Now I'm supposed to go to San Francisco because this is a big premiere and mm -hmm. this is a big theater and I, I don't know. What do I do? Because I'm director and I know this director, so do I go down there and pretend that I don't direct my own plays, that I don't have any thoughts about them? How, when do I get out of the way? When do I say, you know, I can go down and I can just, you know, I can hone the script a little bit for her if she's doing mm -hmm. this, but I can do that on the phone. You know, I'm so... I know, so, I mean, I'm so familiar with my own work that she could call me up and she could say that scene could, I, you know. But why would it be there? Why, why am I there? Am I there to protect it? Am I there to second guess her? Or am I there to back up? But, you know, it's, it's a very weird kind of uh, thing, you know, and they're all keen because oh, George will come and we'll, we'll do this. I know, but when I get there, what do I do? <laughs> you know, I don't want to be that celebrity that sits in the corner and says, you know, in yeah. fact, that's David thing. French goes to almost all his productions. Yeah, did did if he's going now, he's still going. That would be good. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, the, there is something. There is something. I don't want to go back to the television, yeah, yeah. but it is related to what we're talking about. A writer going into the television and the formulized world of television, and the sort of non-formulaic way that you went at writing, that created, in this sense, both a Canadian audience and an international audience of people who wanted to hear this, that by not being sort of formula, castration by formula of television, you actually have, uh, you, in my terms, you give a voice to Canada. Not in the way that we think the Canadian voice is, or there's the Prairie voice, or there's the Newfoundland voice, or there's the nice Protestant Ontario voice. You give this unique voice, the voices, well you talk about the voices inside your head. They're the voices that come out of the streets of Toronto, that come through your head, through your hand, out into a play, out into a television series, and the, for the first time, and that's what I mean, I felt like I was hearing my city. I never heard that before. And I think that's when you say the guy in Germany does not, I still don't really get it as he tries to translate it, but he's hearing the uniqueness of those voices. And that's like gold bars for me in mm -hmm. terms of a culture. Mm -hmm. And to go back to, to the kind of castration that's happening to writers in commercial television, or that kind of slow formula driving it down to zero, that's my fear. So when I go back to you and I say again, what do we say to the writers? What do we say when you come under that sort of pressure? What do you do? Keep pushing, I think. Well, you have a choice. You can just give up and just do what they want and say, okay, it's a job. You know, but I think it has such great potential, you know, the small screen TV where you can tell the long narrative, you know, that there's a long story there, the ups and downs, everything that is great, you know. So it's worth pushing. It's worth pushing back on. But it, I always say that, like, you know, it, it is true that if you come up with something, we come up with an idea of these two writers I'm working with that I sort of loved immediately. And I thought, this will never get on. That was my first thought. I love this so much, it won't get on. <laughs> you know, it was like, I love this too much. If it was something I loved a less, I said the more flexible, but... You've been in the room too long. I've been in the room. Or You've I've, been in the room I've with executive producers too long. But I'm still convinced, because uh, 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 this is a story a series about a small town, family-run cryonics business, you know. <laughs> and I, we got that idea. I went, oh, I would die to do that, you know, literally. I mean, so it's like everything. It's like it's the ethics, <laughs> um, science. Uh, you know, the nature of death, the nature of life, what happens to the soul. Uh, religious. There's going to be a, there's going to be like a church that's on again, uh, 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 trying to close them down. Funeral homes that are trying to close them down. And, and at the core is a scientist who is who is successful in bringing you know like the weed, the beetles back to like wood bugs or something. And then he and, and he's working on getting the mouse because he actually thinks he can bring these people back. That he's got frozen and thanks 
all around. And, and the daughter, who just thinks it's a great business, you know what I mean? It's, it's a service, because like, she says to people, well, would you rather them rotting the ground, or would you like them hanging there? And you can visit them, you know, in their tanks, and, and there might, it might come to pass. And it's, I remember seeing this documentary called Transcendental Man. Have you seen this? It's fascinating. It's about the singularity, about you know, the exponential growth of technology, so that not too long, I mean, and not too long, Robotic artificial intelligence will be so advanced from us that we'll have to become part of them. So it's part cyborg, you know, you know, or else we will be as cockroaches unto them, you know, because they'll be able to solve. So it's about that, but so it's science, but mostly it's about cryonics, cryonics, frozen, fro 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 freezing people until they can resuscitate them, and it's a business. But I thought, I, you know, I'd be happy. I just if I got this on and we could do it the way I think it should be done about. Explain the difference of what death is and what life is and why we're afraid of doing this and why people would just want to prolong all those things that would be go part and parcel with this. So, so we've shown it to people and they, you know, they, again on the development level, they all go, oh, "This is, you know, just great. This is, I'll never get this on up there." <laughs> you know, this. So, uh, so it, what's depressing, I guess, is I knew that right away, but and I was so excited. So, what do you do when you're excited about something and you know it's, it's not going to happen? You just go, whoa, 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 but whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you know, it's what happens, you're trying to suppress that, and you go, oh, how is it, so you write these two episodes, you put everything into it, and you go, at least we got it out of this, you know, so we have these two episodes, and I'll never see the light of day, but I thought, okay, so I, now I'm dealing with the fact that you can't, uh, and that's when I sort of stopped, and right. said, well, I'm just going to go back, and I don't even think of going back to theater, it's like I wanted to write, I had to write all these plays, right. so what happens to them, I don't, I don't even know I care anymore, but it's like, uh, I, Jesus, man. No, I would like, you know, I mean, would you nice to You write plays and you don't care what happens to them? You well, don't not, care if they don't get a production? You don't well, care I'd if say, they Manitoba Theatre Centre or Prairie Third Exchange pick well, them up? Well, it would be nice here and there, you know, there's so many of them. I don't know where... Uh, I think it would be nice to have the students... Read. What I, I got four of them just published on um, online, Amazon. I, did, I found this, this agent approached me and said, well, why don't you, just, instead of getting published hard copy with your new plays, no one's ever read them, we'll just put them on Amazon so they're you're available on Kindle. And I thought, well, that's good. Because then I thought, well, students, because you know, they get a lot of that, you know, students want to, you know, so they have access to it. Right, they, right. They don't have to wait for production. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be judged. It can be read, and they can do it in their bedroom or wherever they want to do it, you know. So I like that idea. And I like that it's not a big deal, you know. Like, it's this whole, I would do theater forever if it wasn't such a, I'm still over, I can't, I've never gotten over this opening night thing. Never. I mean, I was like 23 years old, my first play, they opened the doors at the factory, you know, the, the warehouse people, you know, and uh, I thought, I'm sitting under the risers with Ken, you know, and all these people came in, I thought, what are they doing here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know I'd had a great time rehearsing, and it was George. like kind of fun. And George, what? <laughs> there's a purpose here. <laughs> I know. Well, I hadn't, I had gone somewhere else with that, you know, so I mean, I... Uh,